Thank you for clicking this video. This is Batok with Ola. My name is Mujola Olua and briefly I want to discuss uh, how to write a brief using the FIRAC method. So this is a question that someone asked about a year ago. I was looking through uh, some comments. So someone made a comment on an old video. So I was looking at the comment and I saw that there was a comment like this and I promised to make a video but for some reason I haven't made the video. So this is the video. How to... Uh, the person asked a question uh, that I should discuss how to write a brief, how to develop a brief, how to write a brief using the FIRAC method. The IRAC method, that's what they said, but I'm going to be using the FIRAC method. I've done a video already on FIRAC and how to use FIRAC to analyze cases. Please watch that video if you haven't. So today we want to talk about how to develop a brief. And it's good that we're talking about it now because we've done a video on final written address and how to write it, what it contains. So. This uh, might be a good follow-up, so if you watch the video on written address and watch this one, you should be good to go. So, uh, the brief that I want to discuss today is the brief of argument, that is, uh, the final address, you know, your written argument in a matter. How do you develop it? The FIRAC method means facts, the issue, the ratio, that's the rule, the application, and the conclusion. That's FIRAC. So, how do you apply this in brief writing? Facts. That means you must have uh, interviewed your client or gotten the facts straight. So you uh, put down your facts first. And I'm going to use an example after I've explained this. Then you look at uh, the issue. What's the issue for uh, consideration? Yes, so uh, these are the set of facts in this matter. So what issue has arisen from this set of facts? Then we look at the rule, the ratio. That is, what is the principle of law that applies based on uh, this set of facts to this issue. Then we look at the application. How do we apply it in this particular case? Not just generally how that rule of law applies, but how it applies to this particular case. And then we make our conclusion. So let's use uh, uh, an employment uh, example, for instance, wrongful termination, wrongful termination. What are the facts? Mr. Uh, Olu you know, was employed by uh, uh, Adiolu Bank, you know, in 2020, uh, he worked for them for six months. He was diligent, he did his job, you know, and they paid him, they even increased his salary and gave him a commendation letter, after which uh, they fired him, you know, and claimed that they had fired him for economic reasons. Then he, they fired him without benefits, of course, and without giving him the uh, notice period that he was supposed to be given. So, and now he wants to take them to court. So what are the facts? Those are the facts. He was employed in 2020. He did his job diligently. They paid him. They increased his salary. They recognized his hard work with the commendation letter and increment of salary. Then out of the blues, they fired him and they claimed economic reasons. That is, they could no longer pay him, so they fired him. Now he wants to sue them. So th those are the facts. What's the issue arising from this? wrongful termination because it was not given the proper notice period wrongful termination is the issue arising from this so, so what is the rule of law the rule of law is that uh, you cannot uh, wrongfully terminate the employment of an employee if you want to terminate the employment of an employee of course EUIS can fire but you must fire properly you must fire according to the laid down principle the court has said in several decided cases that uh, a contract of employment is binding on both parties so if parties have agreed on s some mode of firing then it must be re, uh, respected, then that mood must be respected by both parties. So usually in a contract of employment, it will state that if you want to leave us, you would give us a month's notice or salary, one month's salary in lieu of notice, and then you can leave. If we want to fire you, we'll give you a month's notice or give you salary in lieu of notice, and then we'll fire you. That can vary from industry to industry and from employer to employer. But uh, in this particular uh, scenario, in the set of facts that we disclosed earlier, we can see that there's a notice period that his employer was supposed to give, which they did not give. So the rule now is that that cannot happen. That makes it wrongful termination because it was not terminated according to the agreement that they had in the beginning. So there's breach of contract. So wrongful termination resulting in breach of contract. That's, uh, so that's the rule of law. Now, how do we apply it? Applying it, I've already done that halfway. Um, it was not terminated according to the rule of law. So now there's an agreement that they had. They have breached that agreement by not terminating him accordingly. So the application now is that we are going to sue 
for wrongful termination or we are suing, asking the court, you know, if it's a final uh, a brief or if it's a beginning Whatever kind of brief it is, the application is that we are asking the court to declare uh, a sack as wrongful termination that uh, constitutes breach of contract. That's the application of the rule. And what's our conclusion? Our conclusion is that it was wrongfully terminated. It constitutes breach of contract. He has a remedy at law and that the court should declare the termination wrongful, illegal, you know, and uh, unlawful and void ab initio. So he has essentially not been terminated since it was not done according to the contract. So we can ask the court for all the salaries, you know, from the time it was wrongfully terminated up to the determination of the case. We can ask the court for damages. We can ask the court for several other things, you know, uh, of course, putting uh, authorities in support of whatever we're asking. So that's um, an example. It can uh, be more than that or less than that, depending on what you're doing. I mean, the application of Fire Act to your uh, situation. So that's what I want to discuss in this video. I will see you in my very next video. Don't forget to subscribe. To those.